Hi, this is Tim from fitatmidlife.com and today we have an unboxing first look and fit test of the new GORUCK IO Cross Trainer, the new training shoe from GORUCK, the rucking company. What does GORUCK do? They build super tough backpacks, they run rucking challenge events, and they make high performance footwear for the real world like this shoe. This Cross Trainer has features unlike that of any other on the market. We're gonna tell you all about it, so stick around. Let's talk about sizing because that's one of the major things everybody always wants to know. These run big, so it's right on GORUCK's page. Order one full size smaller than you normally wear in a true to size shoe. They recommend one full size or a half size smaller at least. I did not read that before I ordered, unfortunately. I ordered 11, which is what I normally wear, and these are definitely too big for me, so these will be going back. But the reason that they run a little bit big is that they want you to be able to wear these for an extended duration. You're rucking seven miles, 10 miles with these. Your feet are gonna swell and expand, and so you do need a little bit of room for that to occur. For that purpose, there is a wide toe box on these shoes, but length and width considered, you do need to order these up to one full size smaller than your normal shoe size. All right, let's take an up close look at the GORUCK IO Cross Trainer. So first of all, what does IO stand for? Indoor, outdoor. This shoe being made by a company that specializes in ruck march training, is definitely built for the outdoors. And you can see that here in the outsole. There is a very deep tread pattern here that is made for multiple types of terrain. So this is definitely not just an in the gym shoe. Although you'll see that it's stable enough that you could certainly use this in the gym as well. And that's absolutely what it's meant for. So indoor, outdoor trainer. You can see the GORUCK Spearhead logo here on the heel. The outsole is a dual rubber compound, more stable, longer lasting rubber in the heel, more grip and traction up front in the forefoot, which is pretty common with cross training shoes nowadays. The rubber itself, I can tell you, it does feel very grippy. Uh, does feel like there's good traction in the shoe. There is a slight textured surface on this rubber, and this is a deeper pattern definitely than you see on most cross trainers. So you can see that there in uh, some of the various lugs. So overall, this looks like it will work indoors or outdoors. All right, let's take a look at the upper. So the predominant material here is 1000D Cordura, made from polyester rather than nylon, like they use in the backpacks. The reason being that the polyester-based Cordura will be more forgiving and will conform better to the shape of your foot over time. I can tell you that these do feel like they will need a break-in period because 1000D Cordura is quite a stiff material. You can also see they have used what they call challenge leather, full grain leather on the toe cap, on the eye stays, and also on the heel of the shoes. And so that is strategically placed to avoid scuffs and other damage. These shoes are built very sturdy. They feel, they, they feel like they're very sturdy. GORUCK does offer their SCARS lifetime limited warranty on these shoes, so they have to be built tough for that purpose. You can see here I've opted for the embossed USA flags. That is a limited time option that you will only be able to get for the next few weeks. Let's look at these laces. So these are three millimeter laces. This is a uh, smaller diameter than most laces have. The reason being that these are quick and easy to tie. They will not gather much debris or mud and they will dry very fast for when these shoes get wet. And these shoes are definitely designed to be immersed in water. The tongue has padding to protect against lace bite. 
And you can see there's the GORUCK logo on the tongue as well. And here's another example of where these shoes are designed to be immersed. So you'll notice on the inside, there is a mesh covered drain port. And so I've removed the insert and you can see my finger through the mesh. So the mesh very fine grained, it will prevent debris from getting inside the shoe, but you will be able to drain water with every step you take through that drain port as well. So again, a drain, mesh covered drain port specifically for the purpose of expelling water from the shoe when you do get wet. And if you've ever done a Go Ruck challenge event, they oftentimes you will get wet, <laughs> very wet on purpose to make things more challenging. So these are not designed to be waterproof, but rather to drain the water quickly as needed. The other thing in general, these are not made with a lot of absorbent materials like spacer mesh or anything like that. So 1000D Cordura is, is pretty water repellent. Um, there's really, you know, nowhere for water to absorb in the challenge leather. And I've removed the insert here, but there's really nowhere for water to absorb on the inside. So overall, if these shoes do get wet, they will dry pretty quickly or at least will not remain waterlogged for very long, let me put it that way. Here's the insert, the insole from the shoe. You can see the GORUCK logo. There is some pretty good arch support here, and this material is um, pretty lightweight. It uh, does not seem like it would absorb water, and it is, fairly cushioned as well. So that's pretty good uh, compression foam, pretty good cushioning here. After this has been removed, um, there's still the midsole within the shoe. This feels really stiff, um, as does the outsole. So overall, you've got cushioning, but it's not a ton of cushioning like you might have on, on some of the running shoes, like the Nike React running shoes and things like that. And, you know, for a cross trainer, that's generally what you want. You don't want a ton of pillow like cushioning because that's not good for lifting weights and doing uh, various exercises like that. But at the same time, this is a shoe from Go Ruck. And so it is meant that you will rack up the miles on this shoe. So it's got to be comfortable for walking for very long distances and walking with a loaded backpack for very long distances. So there has to be some cushion here. My initial thoughts, um, these do feel very stable and the cushioning is pretty nice, but really I will need a lot more time. This is a first look and unboxing. I will need more time to kind of make a judgment on the amount of cushioning there. The other feature that GORUCK has included in this shoe is not something you can see necessarily, but this shoe has a 10 millimeter heel to toe drop. That means your heel is 10 millimeters higher than your toes inside the shoe. And so that is um, more similar to what you find in running shoes as far as the heel to toe drop goes as compared to your average cross trainer. And so the 10 millimeters is chosen uh, specifically because it is better for walking and um uh, duration of walking and, and things like that. It is more optimal to have a 10 millimeter heel to toe drop. And so that's what they have incorporated in this shoe. Let's talk about weight. So these are very solidly constructed shoes. There's a lot of material in the midsole, in the outsole, the challenge leather, the cordura upper. Um, cross trainers in general are heavier than running shoes. And that's almost always the case because cross trainers are so much more robust. And these in particular feel very robust. Um, they are about an ounce heavier than a Nike Metcon 5, which is a different style of cross training shoe, but they feel like they are much more sturdy and will last longer. I'm going to uh, not give an exact weight because I think my scale is not working properly, but these are about an ounce heavier for a similarly sized uh, cross trainer, such as the Nike Metcon 5 or the Reebok Nano 9. 
Let's take a look at the suede lined heel counter. So you can see on the inside of the shoe that is challenge leather on the outside, that is suede on the inside. And so that will help prevent blisters and other problems when you're wearing the shoe. It does feel quite nice and it definitely feels like a high quality piece of leather. The heel counter itself in this is exceptionally stiff. So there's plastic of some sort on the inside here. And this is one of the most rigid heels that I've ever found in a cross trainer. And so being lined with suede, that's a good thing because this will be a robust shoe, whether you're carrying heavy weights, whether you're lifting in the gym or you're racking up the miles, the suede should help. I also like that the collar comes up quite high. As I've mentioned in many of my other reviews, I'm a big fan of that style of shoe. All right, so let's do a size comparison between the GORUCK IO Cross Trainer and the Nike Metcon 5. And so these are sort of definitely two different styles of cross trainer, but to give you an idea of what the GORUCK shoe is like, you know, we'll compare it here to the Nike Metcon 5 so you have an idea. The um, toe box width in the IO Trainer is supposed to be large. It uh, I can't really tell just from eyeballing it here compared to the toe box on the Nike Metcon 5. I know a lot of people, these are narrow shoes, and so um, a lot of people go a half size up. I did on these. I have 11s in these. They don't fit real well. The 11 and a half fits way better, whereas I wear an 11 in almost everything else. Um, differences in the material. You can see that the Nike Metcon 5, there's a mesh upper. There's a 3D haptic print on it that makes it tough. It uh, varies in density. There's less print here, more print here in the high wear areas. You can see on the Go Ruck shoe, they've gone a different route. They've got that challenge leather across the whole heel cap. You've got a toe bumper, of course. This is the black plus gum combination, by the way, which I think looks quite nice. There's also an all black version of the IO trainer. Laces, you've got uh, flat laces on the Metcon 5. You've got the round but very small speed laces on the IO trainer. You've got a padded tongue in both cases. The heel view, you can see that the Heel counter on the, well, I guess you can't see that part, but the heel counter here, like this, the rigid material in the IO trainer goes like all the way up to here. And so it's much higher than what's on the Nike Metcon 5. It's also much stiffer. Like this is really, really beefy. This, not as much. Will it make a difference? I, you know, I don't know, but I figure I should point that difference out. Um... The Nike Metcon 5, of course, has the monster size rope wrap that you've seen and heard about. Um, this makes the shoe particularly good for climbing ropes, so the tough outsole keeps the rope away from that more delicate upper. And also the rubber outsole on this is very tough itself. Um, there's not necessarily anything like that here, but I mean, this is a super tough upper to begin with. So I don't, you know, rope climbs are not really a go ruck kind of thing. Um, can you climb a rope in these? I don't know. Check back in a few weeks or months and maybe I'll have an answer for you. But there's nothing kind of purpose designed as a rope wrap. The Nike Metcon 5 has a very indoor style of um, outsole, so it's very flat. There's not a whole lot of tread. The lugs aren't very deep. There's flex grooves up front. Um, there's stable in the heel. There's stickier rubber up front for better traction, not unlike that of the IO Trainer. So now the IO Trainer, it's, it's not quite as flat. I don't know if you can see that or not. The sole's not as flat, but it feels like this is a very high traction rubber. I don't think you're gonna have any issue on concrete in the gym with traction in these, even though there's gonna be less contact area when you're on uh, concrete because of the deeper lugs 
and there's obviously just a lot more space here for mud and debris. And so these are certainly gonna be better for outdoor use. Um, if you're rucking, you might be ruck marching somewhere, it's wet, it's muddy, um, and who knows, right? Whereas these work, they're, they're fine, but they're definitely not uh, purpose-built for that kind of thing. The, um, the other major difference between these two shoes is that uh, there's a dual density drop in midsole in the Nike Metcon 5. It's very stiff in the heel. It's got a lot, a lot more cushion up front in the forefoot, and that kind of makes it good for jumping and rebounding type activity. So box jumps, jump rope, running, sprinting, and so on. Um, I can't give you any information on running, sprinting, or jumping in this shoe just yet because it fits me. <laughs> it's so large that I, I'm going to have to send it back and get another one. Um, this, you know, I, rucking is not running. Um, it, it's, it's, it ought to be an awesome walking shoe that you can just walk for miles and miles and miles. Will be you be able to do box jumps and jump rope and all that sort of stuff in here? Well, you know, you, you can do anything, right? But whether it's optimal or not is a different story. So we don't, don't know yet, but uh, check back and hopefully we'll have an answer for that in the future. Okay, and so because I've got one, let's take a look at the IO Trainer as compared to the Reebok Nano 9, which is another very popular cross trainer in the market. See the toe box area there? Nano 9 definitely has the widest toe box of any of the uh, standard in the gym cross trainers. Um, it is a very comfortable shoe. It has this flex weave upper, which is very tough. And actually this uh, kind of feels very tough all over, just like the Cordura upper on the IO trainer. And uh, flex weave overall, I like it a lot. It's, it's really uh, good material. The Reebok Nano 9 has a very thickly padded tongue. Uh, it has minimal cushioning, again, because it is a cross-training shoe, and it has that sort of indoor style kind of uh, tread. This one's quite dirty because I wear it a lot. Um, but very flat, very indoor-focused, high traction uh, out, outsole, whereas, again, with the IO trainer, you're looking more, you'll be out in the mud and, and elsewhere in these things. You'll be out in the real world, not just in the gym. And so that's our first look and unboxing of the Go Ruck IO Cross Trainer, the new training shoe from Go Ruck. Check back in a few weeks. Hopefully, we'll have full results at that time. If you like this sort of stuff, please subscribe. Thank you. Have a good day.